For the word of God is alive and active. Its entrance gives light and understanding to the simple. Welcome to the official sermon tape of Christway Church, Treasure House. As you listen, may God's blessings pour over you abundantly. Now, here's the word for today. Um, a hand clap this morning. You can clap better than that. There are some people sitting outside. Can you see them? Can you put your hands? Just wave at them and say you're welcome. It's a delight to have you. God bless you. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Now celebrate yourself in the house this morning. Glory to God. Last week we had an exciting time here as we celebrated the graduates of FBS. Can you put your hands together and celebrate Jesus for these new workers? If you are clapping, you can clap better than that. Hallelujah. This morning, I want to continue on the trajectory that we began this month. Glory to God. And I want to share with you something that I think will bless you tremendously. Please listen with rapt attention. I want to share with you on the topic a family that enjoys the blessing of God. A family that enjoys the blessing of you notice that I, I substituted that word attract to what? Enjoy. Everybody say enjoy. Can you say enjoy like you know what you're saying? Say enjoy. A family that enjoys the blessing of the Lord. Because if you got married the right way, you already got the blessing of the Lord. So you don't attract the blessing. But you may have that blessing and not manifest it. You may not find it in expression in your life. And that's the reason why I substituted that word for enjoy. So let's take the topic again. A family that what? Enjoys the blessing of the Lord. Say amen to that. Say a louder amen to that. Let's take this tale from the book of Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 28. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 28. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 28. Okay, can we read it together, everybody? Want to go? Can we take it again? So there is a direct instruction here that says not to remove the ancient landmarks that the fathers have set. Recently, I had the privilege to stand on the exalted platform of this ministry at the campground. And as I stood there, even though what I wanted to minister was different, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, Fikayo, ensure that you continue to be in alignment with the ordinances and the dictates that have been set by the fathers in the ministry. Glory to God. He said, that way, I'm going to build you up more and take you to the place I've ordained for you. So I said, what do you mean by build me up more? I was saying something else on the pulpit at the time. But I was having this conversation in me. He said, what do you mean build me up? He says, that which I want to perfect on your inside, I will complete it when you stay on that trajectory. He says, don't remove the ancient landmark. Once again, this generation likes to remove that. In fact, they've removed it. So everything about our life is almost like anti what our fathers have said. They like to do things their way. They believe they are smarter. They believe they are more no- and you are actually more knowledgeable. There is no doubt about it. But there are certain things our fathers have put in place that help them to achieve the success they have in their marriages that we have thrown away today. Glory to God. And one of it, and I've said it again and again, some of you don't like me for it, but it's okay. I'll continue to say it, is this concept of feminism. Everybody say feminism. You see, feminism will not take marriages anywhere. Feminism by default is designed to be anti-marriage because it's a principle or it's a, it's a theory. It's actually a theory or a movement. You can see it as a movement or you can see it as a theory that is set to disbalance or to obstruct 
the, the, the order of things that God has said according to the standard of marriage. In every marriage, there is a standard that God has ordained. The person that instituted marriage is God. And forever is God. Man can come and give you their opinion. Tap your neighbor and say, social media is not your teacher. I, I plead with you. Find another person and preach it to them. Social media is not your teacher. It, 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 look, you can, you can pick one or two things, but it's not your teacher. You can not say that all you know about marriage, all you know about life, you learned it from the social media. It can't be. God instituted marriage. I said God instituted marriage. I, I, I don't know what contents have been created and we have watched it, but that cannot be your teacher. There's a divine pattern that has been instituted by God. It doesn't mean that we have different um, positions, so to speak, but the roles assigned are clearly stated. It doesn't mean one person is better than the other. It doesn't mean one gender is better than the other, but there is the preconceived idea of the roles each of the genders and even the children are supposed to play in the home for it to function the way God has ordained it. Glory to God. I said glory to God. First Corinthians chapter 11. I pray you listen to me today. I pray you listen to me today that there will be humility in your heart to listen to that which I'm saying this morning in the name of Jesus. Say a louder amen to that. If you look at the ministry, there are a lot of men of God, but somebody has been placed above. It doesn't mean they have more abilities. It doesn't mean they, they, it's just positioning. It's just the role that that person has been ordained to function in the spirit. And it doesn't matter how gifted you are as a preacher or a miracle worker or whatever it is that you do. You submit to that ordinance that has been instituted by the ministry. Glory to God. I said glory to God. In this chapter, you have exactly what you have. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. Can we read together everybody wants to go? It says, I would have you know. In other words, it, it's my intent at this juncture of this letter that I'm writing to you that you should understand certain things about marriage. And he stated here that I would have you know that the head of every man is what? Come and talk to me. Is what? Or should I say is whom? And the head of the woman is what? And the, is the man and the head of Christ is so. You see that even it's not even... It's referring to the concept of marriage here. Please go to Living Translation. Living Translation, or if you have message translation, either way, um, serve the purpose. It's trying to divine the standard, the, the, the way he has arranged the structure. If you check the book of Philippians chapter 2, you will see that Jesus did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. But he chose, it's, it's not like one person has more abilities or anything. It's just positioning. Because God in his infinite wisdom has set things to be that way. But this generation has completely obstructed it. And say, you do your thing, I do my thing. You say your thing, I what? We both went to school, glory to God. I said we both went to school, didn't we both? <laughs> didn't we, both? <laughs> we both went to school, glory to God. But the divine ordinance is there. You don't have any translation. Give me message translation. This is new living translation, not living translation. Right. So message also says, if you, I would have preferred living if you have it, but I can make do with this. In a marriage relationship, there is authority from Christ to the husband and from the husband to whom? It, 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 it is structure. Just like you have the organogram in any institution or in any administrative setup. There is a divine order that has been preconceived, preplanned from the foundations of the world. In a marriage relationship, there is authority from Christ to the husband and from the husband to the wife. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How many of you like what I've said so far? <laughs> oh, you're already angry. <laughs> you're already angry. Because a lot of things are presupposed there, therefore. It means you have to choose well. 
having a family that enjoys a marriage means that if this is the structure of a marriage and you will not enter that marriage and rearrange it your own way because you made a mistake from the foundation, you can't afford to make that foundational mistake of marrying the wrong person. Because that means you have to follow the structure in that marriage because you cannot usurp the structure. You cannot help this structure. You cannot better this structure. What we try to do is to see how we can enhance or ensure that this, 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 this structure works in our favor because there is a foundational mistake that has been what? Made. And that foundational mistake starts from some people marrying unbelievers. In the name of this person provides me comfort. This person provides me power. This person provides me money. This person says sweet words to me. they fulfill all the tenets and principles that are found within the, 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 the governing body of what you should look for in the mind, except for the fact that this person is not submitted to Christ. So that structure is there. It says there is authority from Christ to the husband. In other words, every single marriage that we work must start with Christ, followed by the husband, followed by the wife. So it doesn't start with the man. It starts with whom? With Christ. So if that man is not following Christ, you cannot. So you've already created a problem from the start. So let me first address those of you that are not married yet. You have the fantastic opportunity to get it right. Say amen to that. Amen. Say louder amen to that. Amen. I, I'm surprised that you today we still have people that will decide that it's that unbeliever they want to be unequally yoked with. I'm, I'm completely dazed that we have believers that are tongue-talking, people that at least have an understanding of who Christ is. And yet, in a, because really, the, the, the wedding is decided by the wife. The person choosing is, no, is it the husband choosing or the wife? Who is choosing? Have you thought about it? Who is choosing? Who is making the selection? It's the wife. You think it's the husband? The husband comes with the proposal. It is the wife that will say yes or no. And when you say no, that means another person can come. And then another no, that means another. So it means the person really choosing his wife. And that power is given so that you can choose correctly. Find somebody and say choose correctly. Find another person and say choose correctly. It, it, it's, it's very saddening that um, I, I think recently we had somebody uh, that um, we had to go to Lagos, not me in person, but uh, we had to go to Lagos and to go and rescue a lady from a home where uh, the person has been abused, locked up in a room in, in Lagos. They're not married. And this is the daughter of an ordained minister. Find a sister beside you and say, choose correctly. Find another sister and say, choose correctly. Because if you are talking about enjoying God's blessing in that home, one person cannot do it. Let me repeat that. One person cannot do it. You come with all the Holy Ghost and say, only you will make that marriage work. It cannot happen. It takes two to make that marriage work. Two people that are willing to cooperate. Two people that are willing to make it work. Until the second person agrees to make it work, it cannot work. That's the meaning of don't be unequally yoked together. Because he understands. say that he comes to church, he goes to church, he, that is not the job thing, he's born again. You're measuring his, his, his spiritual acumen by his attendance in church. Praise the Lord. Those people that are not keeping eye contact with me, 
I suspect you. Find somebody beside you. Say, is he paining you? <laughs> say, no, no, no. Say you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Comfort them and say you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But sincerely, it, 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 it just amazes me. It just amazes me that in all your wisdom, that God has ordained for you before the foundation of the world, you think that you are smart for marrying an unbeliever. Because you watch somebody online and you, you, they, they show you that he's not born again and he's a good man, he's handsome. It's, it's amazing how handsomeness ranks higher than being born again. It's amazing how all these things that you can think about rank higher. It can be prevented. Praise the Lord. Never let pressure drive you to the wrong person. Never, don't, don't say, uh, uh, Pastor, you don't understand, time is going. I understand time is going, but enjoy your single wood right now. We, we, we'll be making short videos very shortly about different things that will address relationship now by the grace of God. Once we are through um, with this discipleship um, teaching to help explain some of these things further. Because once again, I'm amazed. He said, by now you ought to be a teacher, yet you need somebody else to come and retrain you. To come and explain to you that, ask everybody that is married there. You know, there's that Yoruba. I don't know, it's, it's in the Bible. That uh, if Tabashele is Gitutu, Melo Melo Nikini. It's a lifelong, and you see, one of. I reconnected with a daughter of mine recently. Um, from Ibadan. And um, I was now asking her uh, about how she has spent her life. And you'll be amazed, very beautiful. 2022, she's, she's a barrister. 2022, she got married. 2023, don't talk it. 2023, she was out. In her case, it, it was the fact that she thought she heard God. Because I, I'm coming to those now that say they are in a relationship with they, they certify, and I, I think I would have loved to give the microphone to my wife at this juncture now. Because he said, Pastor, she'll be caught born again. I am already. <laughs> oh, my born again. Because it's not even about it. You will discover that even being born again now. Who, who is that? <laughs> that he can preach that he can teach, that he can pray, that he can prophesy, that he is anointed, don't miss marriage. And one of the issues is you, you think that marriage is about love predominantly. Marriage is about love, glory to God. Oh, <laughs> Can I share some of these things with you? Look, the entire internet is inundated with that thing. You are exposed to it on a consistent basis so much that it has entered you. Chapter what, verse what? Chapter what, verse what? So you've completely misconstrued what you are into is about. Doesn't mean you will not love. Don't don't get me wrong. But it's when you ordained marriage, it, it, it didn't. Praise the Lord. The devil will never talk, stop affecting or attacking families, because that is his way to the to the nation. His way to every single nation is through families. All you need to attack the root. The root is the family. You see, one of the purposes of marriage is for you to fulfill divine assignments. Do you know many people that are in relationship are not thinking about kingdom assignments? Many people in relationship, check 95% of believers in a relationship 
don't know about assignments. They don't know. The concern they have, I tell you before God, is that how do I feel about this person? How does this person make me feel? And of course, you know that that phase of love is going to pass away. No matter how long you hold on to it, that phase of love is going to pass away. The same thing that attracted you will very soon repel you. It's a matter of time. Just like, oh, this man can teach. See how he's teaching. I'm feeling him. Hey, I want to marry him. You see, it's, it's the same talking that I'm talking now. Now, <laughs> you, you will come back and tell me. I'm telling the same thing that pulled you in the first place. It, 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 it's a stage that every relationship goes through. Because they have now not been taught that this thing is not about that feeling that you have. It's beyond that. It's, it's God trying to achieve a purpose with the two of you coming together. That consciousness is missing. Makes that thing to go hurry. And everybody's preaching divorce now. Once again, don't, don't shoot me and say, I, 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 if, if, if there is a fatal mistake made from the foundation once again, of course, you may need to divorce. But that's another topic I don't want to enter into right now. What, how come divorce is the first order of the day now? How many relationships have you had? To show you how you are likely, because you say that it's because the relation that I'm breaking up anyhow. Praise the Lord. Are you listening? Are you listening? Some of you that have made the terrible mistake. It's, it's okay. <laughs> the, the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. If you are now in this relationship, how do you tell? How do you tell? Because once again, if you get it right at that point, I'm coming to the marriage and possibly at this juncture, I'm going to merge the two. Okay? How to enjoy the blessing. Let, let me say it up front now. Please find somebody beside you and preach this to them. Emotion in your family is utmost. Put it like that. Not sure that's the best of the way to construct it. But that's how it just occurred to me. You see, the emotion that permeates within the territory, the confines of that family, the feeling of love, the feeling of joy, the feeling of peace, you don't need to fight. It's not until you start boxing. It's not until you start boxing that there's a problem. Immediately that emotion is missing in that home. Everybody's just doing their thing in, in a system. I'm still going to talk about system because you need a system, but it, it becomes robotic. There is no emotional, or the emotion you have is sorrow, regret, sadness. In, in, have they fought? Have they said, okay? They have not said any of those things, but you can see the consistent manifestation of this emotion in that relationship or that family. They, they've lost the way. Home has to be a place of joy. Your partner has to be somebody that you look at consistently and you say, praise the Lord for his good and his words. <laughs> Every single time that you do. <laughs> <laughs> Which other style do you have? Every single time all of that takes place, I tell you. You are just packaging it. Number one, that relationship you are in must honor God. Wait, this is what I mean. I mean that the things we are doing inside that relationship makes you love God more. Vet your relationship now. In other words, after two months, you feel like you are better in the things of God. Because God is the one that is instituting marriage. So whatever you are doing, if it is anti him, if it is taking you away from him, if it is making you do things that are against him, how do you think he's there? How do you think he's there? Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Number two. That relationship. Where did I say number one is? What's number one? I can't hear you. 
It honors God. How did I explain it? Talk to me, talk to me. Whatever the things are you are doing in that relationship, call you to God. Draw you to God. Move you more closer to God. Like that relationship is not impeding your relationship with God. Rather is amplifying. So you have certain wives that say that since I got married, my spiritual life has what? Has gone down. What was happening in the relationship? What was happening in the relationship? Because anything that God ordains, anything that God institutes will not take you away from him. Why will he institute something that will draw you away from him? It's not rocket science. Is it rocket science? It's not. So you discover your spiritual life has gone down. You discover that your, your devotion to God and things of God have gone down. It's not because of the activities. Something needs to be fixed. So that's why I said, maybe I'm going to combine both those in relationship and those who are married. The difference is that one can step back, the other can, can, cannot step back. Number two, that relationship dignifies you. That relationship dignifies you. You are proud to identify with the person. You are proud. That, that, that relationship does not belittle you. That relationship does not make you feel less of yourself. That relationship amplifies the giftings of God in your life. Have you, have you considered that story that you have in John chapter 4, verse 18? That story where Jesus was talking to that woman um, at the well site, and then they were having that interaction. I'm going to give you the water of life, blah, 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 blah. There was a word of key that Jesus gave there, word of knowledge, I mean, that Jesus gave there. He says that, he said, go and call your husband. The woman says, I have no husband. Then Jesus says, you are correct. You have had five husbands, and the person you are with now is not your husband. So this person has moved from one, two, three, four, five, six. May Lord give you understanding. <laughs> but here's my point. None of these six people made that woman an evangelist. This woman met Christ in some minutes, and she became what? None of those six people knew that she had the ability to speak to a city. Obviously, they didn't even see value now because for, for, for her to have left and be moving like that, it had to be that there is the absence of the perception of value in that which God has ordained for them, if God ordained for them. But yet inside that woman was the ability to single-handedly in a few hours speak to a, a city and the entire city will gather at the feet of Christ. That vision has been shot down by six men. So I said, it not only honors God, but it also brings out. So you still see the connection between honoring God and still bringing out the giftings that is inside you. You will know in the relationship that does this relationship bring out the gift that are inside me. Number three. Number three. When I wrote this one down, I, I, I was looking for the simplest way to communicate it to you. I don't want to use a spiritual term. I would have said perception. But I shifted it to consistent, your highest consistent feeling. Don't disregard it. Your highest consistent what? Feeling in that relationship. We, 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 people deceive themselves every day. They live in self delusion. Do you understand? What's me of delusion? <laughs> if I give my wife a microphone, I should tell you that. What somebody is doing right now in a relationship, they will do time ten in marriage. Why 
is this place so quiet today? <laughs> I've, not, I've not seen you this quiet in a long time. You used to shout glory. <laughs> you used to shout glory, glory to God. What's going on today? Uh, it's all in shout glory now. Ah! Ah! <laughs> come on, come on, come on. <laughs> What a person is doing in relationship. And marriage does not change anybody. It is, it is delusion to think that marriage, I will change him, I will change her. That is why, and don't also misinterpret what I meant by your highest, consistent, topmost feeling. This is what I mean. If you listen to DCL 107 or 108, where I talked about how to hear the voice of God, I focused on one thing there, which is your inward witness. See, your inward witness never leads you astray. It is the primarily designed way that God has ordained for a believer to hear his voice, not by to lose wonderful. It, 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 it's not by that. It is by the precipitation of the consistent constraint or restraints that you feel right there in your inward man. And the reason I put consistent, because you can't use what happens in two days or in three days to judge that feeling. It is consistent because that is the will of the Lord precipitating inside you. And you see it week one, you see it week four, you see it week seven, you see it week eight, and yet you disregard it. That voice is the voice of God. It is consistent and never goes away. Even after the error has been exposed, you still know that that nudging is there. Who has understood what I said? Who has understood what I said? Okay, few people have heard that. Who has understood what I said? Okay, you just chose not to lift your <laughs> Or you don't want to show that you don't understand. What did I just explain now? I'm trying to show you, the reason I use that word feeling is because that is the simplest way I can capture it. Be, there's no way you are praying in tongues, you are interacting with that person. You will feel. Have people come to you before and said, Pastor, I prayed about it and I felt peace. Your body can simulate peace because you have been taught by the internet and every pastor you have met that, you already, before you met that person, you already knew that peace, peace is your language. You, you, because that is the that is the thing that we've been taught, and you want this person, so your body will simulate peace for you. But the thing is that that peace will not stand the test of time. It will, the, 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 whether it's yes or no, it will precipitate for consistent period. Some people catch up with it after six months. Some people catch up with it after two years. Some people catch up with it, but from the word go to the degree of the manifestation of the emotional outburst that you have used to cloud that thing is to the degree that it will take you a while to recognize the precipitation of that holy emotion that I'm referring to here. Who has understood what I've said? The sharper your sensitivity is, more quickly you pick this vibration in the spirit. I've used a very simple word again. It is called feeling. Everybody say feeling. I use that word, but you, you know that I'm talking about, it's not your human Ooh. I'm not talking about that one. I'm talking about the one that you know is coming from your core. Even when you are not thinking, it is there. When you are thinking, it is there. With or without your help, that feeling is there. It won't lead you astray. What's number one? What's number one? Huh? Huh? You know that what has happened to me? You know. And when you even see these things in marriage, it's, it's time to talk. It's time to talk that this marriage has not made me serve God more. I seem to serve God less. Maybe I should have added. God increases his kingdom through our families. 
Malachi chapter 2 verse 14. Increases the godly seeds that you produce. The godly seeds, because when you have a believer and unbeliever, you can't produce a godly seed. You can't produce a godly seed. You can't. And his aim is to, you see, the kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our God. The proliferation, the furtherance of his kingdom. So that relationship honors God. It draws you closer to God. You know. Please let me tap every man beside you. Let me, if, if you find a married person or to be married, let me tap them and say, you should not draw your wife away from serving God. I think about that thing I just told you. If, how can Jesus spend few hours with this person and have saved the city? At this point, I'm, I'm tempted to discuss the, the uh, biblical unction that rests on the fathers. But I will not go in that direction. In, in, in order of priesthood, king, and prophet. Because every husband is now a priest, is now a king, and is now a prophet. He carries these three unctions and he must manifest them on a day basis in his home. And in the relationship, you can also see these unctions manifesting in the person you are relating with. You can't find the priestly function in their life. You can't, you, usually the one that manifests the most is the kingly one. That is the one that attracts. But you see what powers the kingly unction is the priesthood. The prophetic one is the one that hears what is God saying. And the wife needs the patience to allow the husband to let me hear. Okay, let me go back to my script so that, uh, <laughs> so that uh, I, I, I have not exceeded my script. But these three, who did that come from? There are times I say things that I, I, I didn't plan to say, but it, 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 somebody makes me say that. Who did that come from? Receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Say a louder amen. amen. Round up. What is the primary constituent of that marriage that God as ordained to enjoy his blessings. That blessing was pronounced in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, 27, 28. Be fruitful. The blessing has been pronounced. It's been pronounced. But what family enjoys that? One verse. Ephesians chapter 5. Around. Ephesians chapter 5. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say Hallelujah. That, that series I'm talking about, we're, we're going to, verse 33. I'm going to need it in Amplified, but first in KJV. Then after we'll go to Amplified. Okay, let me stick to this. Let me stick to this. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. And the wife see that she reverences her husband. Lift your hands and give him thanks. Let's give him thanks. Let's give him thanks. Now the Lord is setting your family correctly. Is putting you in alignment, in alignment, in alignment. Is is he has ordained great things for you, and they will find the expression. Your home will be an example of what the kind of home God has ordained for us to have on the surface of the heart to be. Give him thanks and give him praise. Give him thanks and give him praise. Masoste mekto bravande jembro kosavaradesh leko zambro monte konta. Just give him thanks and give him praise. Glory to God. You will be one of the remnant that got it right. You will be one of the remnant that got it right. You will be one of the remnant that got it right. Mako shaparadesh lembro kosi libra dagata shetele barada temende greto sibeliash libra taka pan derekete shetele Thank you, Lord. Menti kalabarada shantelia. Glory to God. Mikata labahash. Glory to God. Menti kiyash. 
that everyone that is named among us get it right get it right we get it right, we get it right, and you have every family, every relationship to get it right, to get it right. Every single person is there uh, to make the right decision. Uh, to make the right decision. Help of the Lord. Mandeka perigata la barada haya. Limoto brede shana mandala la ba. Glory to God. Do you know I'm married? Long before I proposed, I had emotions. I never read about relationships. You see, but God was always speaking to me. Never read it. I never read about relationships. I never did those things. But God was always speaking to me. Every time I was interacting with my wife, I was checking my heart. Every single time we were talking, laughing, quarreling, what are you going to do? I was always checking. Think about two, three, four, five months. I was checking. One day, I think you were there. I think you were there. Was it you? Was it Tolu? And I brought out the ring. There's nothing that will happen between us. Maybe a fight, God forbid, anything that happens that will make me think it's not God that led me. That decision was not made from the emotion I felt. I was not clouded. I was not clouded. That decision will come from that divine knowing when he said you have an unction from the holy one and you know all things you know you know you know you know and he said it does not lie you know but you disregard the knowing and you want pastor to fix the remnants and you want me to fix the remnant I have the second part of this teaching, but something must have stopped me now to make this proclamation again and to even tell you a portion of my story. Maybe to encourage somebody. That knowing will not guide you wrong. Doesn't matter how glossy everything looks outside or how gloomy it looks outside. Subjected to time. Why are you in a hurry to start a relationship? Why? You rush in, rush out. Why? Why, why are you starting fast before anybody knows, before anything? Then in a short period of time, there are challenges. Why? When you could have taken your time and, and put to practice the supernatural side of you that knows all things. I tell you that is what will keep you through storms in that relation. Because every marriage has its storms. Every marriage. He said the, the wind blew, the rain fell. And he hit the house. He said one stood, one did not stand. So it's not that one was exempted from the wind. What will keep you is, is, is the knowing. It doesn't matter what you encounter. And I've told you here, there is no problem designed against any family that is designed to bring it down. No weapon formed against you. The, the, the ordination of the institution that God has ordained is to outlast any challenge that faces it. Whether it's a challenge of money, the challenge of the name, whatever the challenge is. That marriage, if they keep the details and the roles that are assigned to them, they will come out triumphant over it. It doesn't matter the magnitude. 
But when there is crack already at the foundation, you have, you have started on the wrong foot. Make the right decision. And don't be apologetic about it. I gave you the illustration of a person that was to, to, to the girl was being touched and the, the girl slapped the guy. Slap, slap, slap. The boy was touching the girl. He landed the slap. And uh, she was feeling guilty for slapping. There are things we do that are not apologetic about it. But why? No, the, the orientation some of us have is been so warped. It's been so warped that the, you see little of self. You see little of yourself. You can see yourself as the wonderfully and fearfully made creature to are in Christ. So you take anything. So let me just go. Let me just continue. Let me just go. Let's just do it like that. It will get better on the it way, it way. Get better now. It should get better now. It should get better now, because you will see time stain. And don't say it is not a case. It's not. Usually we are at our best during that relationship time. You see the real person. You see the real person when you marry. Now, if you are now in that situation, you and I'm speaking to you, you know that you 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 put up a show for your man or for your wife. Now you're born again, you are hearing my voice now. You should now consciously start making effort to amend. That's the next best thing now. And now stay where you are. And now let's 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 pick it up now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What's on us to do that said? want a marriage where it doesn't matter. God led me. God what? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't come here because I saw a, a fine boy. Thank God for fine boy. I'm a fine boy. <laughs> but, but, but you see, I was not like this when my wife chose me. There was nothing comely about me. If you saw me six, seven years ago, I used to laugh and fall on the floor. They say, hey, what's wrong with this boy? You, you might not see this fashion or the fashion that is still coming. Oh, there's another fashion coming. This is all the fashion there is. But you, 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 how did you see today, man? <laughs> and I tell you, that thing, Stop all this mushy mushy kind of what maybe you should shut down social media if you cannot dis- dissociate yourself from the effect of that thing. Because social media will not live in that family with you. Do you understand what I'm saying? The, that content creator is not gonna be in that home with you. It's you and your husband, it's you and your wife. Let me tell you today if you have time. I'm supposed to now explain this bastard the three to you. I'm wondering how do I open this new get now and explain love to you. Can I do it in five minutes? Do you have time? Yes, sir. Do you have time? Yes, sir. Let me try. See, let me try. Because what, what, what do you now do? That was for whoever. I, I hope you picked it. <laughs> this has given us the direct instruction of how that blessing is activated in the home. It says, for husband to love the wife as himself and for the wife to reverence the husband. Write these four things down about that love. And once again, you can find it in the relationship. You can find, what what I'm saying now, now, as a man, if you are not doing these things, you have to start now. You have to start now. Imagine a husband that has gone away to go and hang out with a friend and has forgotten the wife. You can't do that. You can't be behaving like a bachelor. 
Praise the Lord. Number one. Communication. What that love means. Communication. Communication. And that means gist. Tap somebody and say gist. How come you don't have time to gist? Now, let me strike a balance. Let your gist not be about Mrs. Lagwaja. <laughs> that I say. No, no, no. It's not that kind of gist. But you see, when we have kingdom agenda in our mind and we are thinking about, do, do you know about the program I'm doing? Do you know how is it going? Oh, God's in love. Oh, let, let's go. <laughs> gist. How come you don't talk? How come you press phones only? But once again, let there be a balance. It's not like your conversation has hit a <laughs> In five minutes, that conversation has turned to what? Only the budget. The journey with your own rather. You see, you rather not have that conversation than the one that leads to that. And that's why the purity of that comes. Oh, how beautiful it is. He said, nobody can fathom you of the man and his maid. That connect, that divine connect that exists. Praise the Lord. How this person speaks and this person has not interpreted it in a terrible way. You know, this person, the, 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 the interpretation that has been supplied is completely opposite what the speaker intended. And it's continuous that every time a person speaks, the other person assumes wrongly. Kills the relationship, keeps the communication. But in any ways, you have to consistently be talking. Even the Holy Spirit wants to talk to you. No, be so. If our helper, the Holy Spirit, consistently is talking, and he's talking right now, he's talking through me right now to you, and when you are going to me, speaking from your heart, it means to talk is important. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Number two, touch. That's in love. Touch. I'm not talking about you now if you're in a relationship. If I catch you, hey, t- take that hand just now. Take that hand just now. I'm not referring to you. Say my love language is, Pastor, you don't get it. <laughs> my love language is talk. I'm sorry. You have to, you have to wait. You can get married now. Except, Platonic touches. But in, ma- in marriage, a lot of touching. Maybe I can tell you to follow social media small in that, in, that, in that area now. Because it's, it seems you understand touching. We, we are too spiritual. <laughs> oh, I changed something recently. Can I share it with you? If I'm praying, you don't disturb me. You don't go in, in certain areas. But I see that I've changed. Ah, if you understand, you understand. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm serious. Because it does not affect your spirituality. <laughs> Before I used to think, what, 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 what do you? <laughs> no, it doesn't. Oh, who feels like Mary? Who feels like <laughs> no matter how tired you may be, if something rises, something must meet it. I speak in the language of Jama. <laughs> it not grant you understanding. <laughs> but sincerely, it's true. Touch. But once again, if you are in a relationship, I'm not referring. A husband must cuddle his wife. <laughs> what is going on here? You know, you used to do like this when we are happy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sincerely, it's true. If you are with your wife now, I don't mind you touching her. Praise the Lord. You don't know what a, a touch, a tap, a pat can do to a person. Even when you're in silence. 
Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I, I was watching, um, is it the voice of British God Talent? And there was an act, there was an act that, I don't know, maybe it's a contortionist or somebody was doing something. And it was so gri- gripping, so much that they now shifted from the stage to the audience. And I think a husband and a wife is not, they were held early, so don't think uh, we're together. And at that moment, you know, the husband just grabbed the wife and all this. Uh, I said, oh. <laughs> and even in this economy, you don't think you need that kind of thing. Where everybody just goes their separate way and it's so robotic and monotonous in that home. Praise the Lord. Number one, communicate. All the time, we are talking. And please, it says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. It says, when you speak, you speak with grace to edify. So every time I'm speaking, oh, it's going to get better. It's going to work out. Not close. You know, it's derogatory. You'd rather not have that conversation. Even when you make a mistake, you don't count. You don't count all the... Cannot work. Say love cover it a multitude of true, true. So the wife must partake or participate. Primarily, he says it's not good for this man to be alone. I will make him a what? The helpmate has now become the first antagonist. That's the problem. The first, the person causing more problem for the mission or division is the wife. That's what you have now. That's what you have now. With the, with the words, with the attitude, with no encouragement, no, nothing. Praise the Lord. May the Lord grant us understanding. Amen. Let me round off with that amplified translation. Go to that amplified translation. Amplified translation. And I think, I think we have our daddy outside. Everybody rise to your feet and let's celebrate that day. I think I see daddy outside. If you are clapping, you can clap better than that. You, 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 don't worry, I, I, daddy, <laughs> we recognize you, sir. If you are clapping, you can do better than that, treasure. You can do better than that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amplified simply amplifies. And that's what he has done here. Can we read together where you want to go? However, each man among you, without what? Is to love his wife. And we'll try to explain that. As his own very self, with behavior worthy of respect and esteem, always seeking the best for her with an attitude of loving kindness. And the wife must see to it that she respects and delights in her husband. Today, the person that thinks the husband is worthless and useless, the first person is who? Because she sees his weaknesses, which many other people don't see. They, they think you're a correct person. You are, you are a non entity. There's nothing about you. <laughs> the wife must see to it that she respects and delights in her husband, that she notices him and prefers him and treats him with loving concern, treasuring him, honoring him, and holding him. Damn. The simple secret is this verse. Good marriage. Lift your hands and give him thanks. Just give him praise and give him worship this morning. Leko Kabaradesh, Mambro Koshambra Castelevash, Jemene Kunta, Mambro Kostash, Ele Kunta, Mambro Tosash. We are talking about a family that enjoys, that enjoys, that enjoys, that enjoys the blessing of God. That enjoys the blessing of God. Mambro Koshabaradesh, Lembro Kosham, Devlemene Kunta Le, that God continues to help the husbands and the wives in our midst and many more that we join them that they enjoy the blessing
blessing of God in their home. Just lift your two hands and give him thanks and praise. Thank God for a great family that you are having. That you are having. The Lord is giving you a great home. Your home is dysfunctional. The Lord is healing your home now. In the name of Jesus, if you have a heartbreak, the Lord is healing your heart now. Makota parada hate. Can you project Psalms 133 verse 1? Thank you, Lord. Man de Kabarata Kaligo Veridash. And out and behold. You know that was sick. Just see, see how it's important for a family to dwell together in unity. He said, That's where God commands His blessing. Where that, that unity is there, that unity, that oneness, everybody understands their role and they function according to it. He said, That's where God commands His blessing. Look at it. He said, How pleasant and good it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Verse 2. Verse 2. We're going to verse 3. Said it's like the precious ointment upon the air. That's your husband that ran down upon the bed, even Aaron's bed that went down to the skirt of his garments. Verse 3. As the dew of Ammon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing. There's something about unity. Even in a church, there's something about unity. In every ministry, there's something about unity. I've talked about sibling rivalry. There's something about unity in the home that the devil is attacking consistently. Consistently is attacking it. The emotions are not united. The thoughts are not united. The language is not united. Nobody is united. What does happen to our unity? Lift your two hands and let's pray. That we are more united. That we are united. As God has ordained, the children are united to their parents. They are united to their parents. Husbands are united to their wives. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thanks for listening today. If this message has strengthened your faith, ignited your passion for Christ, and motivated you to make a lasting impact in the world, kindly send in your testimonies to 091-3710-5352 or email us at cwtreasurechurch at gmail.com. We would love to connect with you. You can watch us live on Sundays and view past messages on our YouTube channel at youtube.com Christway Church Treasure House. For updates and more, please subscribe to our channels and handles on your favorite apps at underscore Treasure Church. And if you would like to support any of the church projects, please send a message to 091-3710-5352. God bless you abundantly. Have a great week.